broadcast. I'm your host, Evangelist Anita Rivera. Folks, I have another report to share with you all. This one coming in from Israel365news.com. I found this very interesting. I think you're going to really receive uh, some informative uh, things concerning this particular report and the pandemic, the coronavirus, the COVID-19. Check this out. It says the following. Rabbi says, panic from pandemic based in idolatry connected to Satan. All right. Well, let's look at this. There's a scripture, a scripture quoted here. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. So let's go directly to that portion of scripture here to kind of lay the foundation for today's broadcast. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, it says the following, and said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have, which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Amen and amen. All right. So again, uh, Rabbi says panic from pandemic based in idolatry connected to Satan. Apparently a rabbi has unraveled the roots, the etymological roots of the word pandemic and discovers its dark roots in paganism, linking it to other troubling social symptoms of the coronavirus, including panic and pandemonium. Rabbi Machiel Green, he, he is the director of the Shabbat Center over in Westboro, Massachusetts. He wrote a Facebook post just this past Thursday analyzing the etymology of the word pandemic, which is defined as a disease that is prevalent over a whole country or the world. He said, and I quote, by now, we all know that COVID-19 is not a true pandemic. He went on to write the following. He says, in fact, at this time, it's unclear whether a virus even exists. And given the absurd manner or the absurd manner in which they are testing, there is no way that the so-called pandemic will ever go away. Beyond that, however, something about the word pandemic bothers me. Maybe this is just semantics, but words are important in Judaism. Pan, he went on to say, is Greek for all. Endemic from demos means people, as in an incident that threatens all people. The rabbi then discovered that the root word pan referred to a specific pagan deity. Did you know that the Greek pan, P-A-N, was once believed to derive from a polytheistic deity named Pan? Capital P, P-A-N, in ancient Greek was a bestial deity of nature and the wild. Rabbi Green continued, it was also the god of herdsmen and hunters and neo-paganism. Pan has been identified as none other than Satan. Well, in the classical age, the Greeks associated Pan's name with the word Pan, meaning all. The word panic derives thereof since this deity's presence was believed to arouse sudden, uncontrollable fear that led people into irrational behavior. There is something deeply disturbing about the word pandemic. It invokes pandemonium, a wild uproar, as if all demons were let loose. And isn't it strange how demic from demos in Greek, which means people, is oddly similar to the word demon. It's almost as if the concept of a pandemic brings something demonic out of people. Well, Rabbi Green suggested that the spiritual dark power associated with the word was having a real world effect upon the current crisis. He went on to state the following, and I quote, Could it be that this pandemic is a perverse idea concocted? by self-proclaimed pans in an attempt to create panic and pandemonium as a means of subjugating all humankind to become their compliant herd. Is pandemic a tool used by self-styled hunter deities, if you will, to ensnare their prey? Panic, pandemic, pandemonium, all three reek of paganism. In the Torah, there is one God and there is never a reason for fear or panic. We are to be subservient only to God and not to any human overlord. Rabbi Green's solution was straightforward. He said, and I quote, let's reject the term pandemic, its dubious origin, and its illegitimate use in modern time. God is one and there is none other. All right, listen, I, 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 I think that's, that's a pretty excellent article. Now, I want to share with you a couple of portions of scripture. First and foremost, I want us to go, if you don't have your Bible, quickly get it. It's very easy to get your word and get into the word, come on, so that you can not only study to show yourself approved, a workman not needing to be ashamed, 
rightly dividing the word of truth, but also renewing your mind, knowing the promises of God, which are yes and amen to the glory of God the Father, especially in the times that we're living in. Come on. The Bible tells us that the days are going to grow darker. Evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So let's look at the word of God says about fear. Now, there are a number of portions of scripture in the Bible that talks about fear uh, and, and how God has either delivered us from it, has not given us it, or it's not of him. And if it's not of him, it's not to be of us. Now, 1 John chapter 4, verse 17 tells us the following, love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Everyone say it with me. Perfect love casts out fear. God's perfect love casts out fear. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent his Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The word goes on to say, love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Oh, love the Lord. Love covers a multitude of sins. The book of Ecclesiastes tells us that there is a time to love. We are to let brotherly love take a hold of us. We're to let the love of Christ take a hold of us. This is the time to let love, the love of God. God is love. Outside of him, there is no love. Even if it poses itself as love, it's a false love because only God is love. Anything that's associated with God, all things that are associated with the almighty God, with his holiness, with his attributes, with his characteristics. And the Lord tells us love, perfect love, casts out all fear. So if you have been fearing during this pandemic, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus and say again that God's perfect love cast out fear. Submit and surrender your fears to him today, right now. If you've been scared, if you've been in fear, maybe you've been living in torment secretly. It's all open to God. He knows everything that you've been dealing with. You need to surrender your life to him. You really can't say, well, if God knows, how come he hasn't done this? And No, you can't do that. You cannot do that. You have to decide whether you want to live in that state of fear or if you want to be free and be given a new life in Christ Jesus. Once you make that decision, all bets are off. Any, any, anything that the enemy had planned for you is brought to nothing. And all of God's promises for you, which are yes and amen to the glory of God the Father, is now in you and it surrounds you. Goodness and mercy will literally follow you all the days of your life and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, there are several, I think, very astounding pieces here that was shared by this particular rabbi. But one I want to kind of visit again because I want to take you to a portion of scripture found in 2 Timothy. But first, let me reread what he, he writes here. He says, in the classical age, the Greeks associated Pan's name with the word Pan, meaning all. The word panic derives, therefore, uh, since this deity's presence was believed to arouse sudden uncontrollable fear that led people into irrational behavior, there is something deeply disturbing about the word pandemic. It invokes pandemonium. Uh, and then he says, a, a wild uproar as if all demons were let loose. And isn't it strange how demic from demos in Greek, which means people, is oddly similar to demon. It's almost as if the concept of a pandemic brings something demonic out of people. All right. We're living in the last days. We're living in the end times. Jesus tells us in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, Luke chapter 21, that there will be signs of the times proclaiming, declaring, confirming that the day of the Lord is at hand. Go with me very quickly to 2 Timothy chapter 3 starting in verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3 starting in verse 1. I want us to read this and we're going to kind of break this down because this is where we are at in these times that we're living in. It says the following, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Let's repeat.
repeat that portion of scripture again. Know this. That in the last days, perilous times will come. All right, so few people will question that we're living in dangerous, very treacherous times. There are some who really believe that we're not living in the last days. As a matter of fact, there's a doctrine or doctrines that are being purported and, 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 and has been let loose in the churches in the times we're living in, saying, listen, we're not living in the last days. Stop talking about the last days. Uh, you know, Stop talking about the end of the world and, 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 and the second return of Jesus. We're not there yet. We're nowhere near there. They're wrong. They're wrong. There are the false prophets and the false teachers that the Bible warned us about in 2 Peter, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, in the book of Jude, in the words of Jesus found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, where false Christs and false prophets will rise up. So few people again will question that we're even living in dangerous and treacherous times, especially for people without God. The last decades have brought fear and terror into the hearts of people around the world. Now, regardless of where you live, whether in the United States, Europe, Asia, or the former Soviet Union, people have been rudely awakened to the truth that the world is no longer the place that it used to be. This is definitely a different age, far removed from the world many of us remember as children. Now, even today, it is difficult to imagine how things could have spiraled spiraled so out of control so quickly. However, nearly 2,000 years ago, when the Apostle Paul wrote the book of 2 Timothy, the Holy Spirit spoke through him to alert each and every one of us that a day would come. By the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul wrote the following again, and I reiterate. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. The word know in this verse is a translation of the Greek word ginosko. Now, the word gnosko is a common word that is normally translated knowledge. In this verse, Paul used gnosko, the Greek word, in the present imperative tense, which means that this message is something so critical, so important that it must be known. There is a, an urgency attached to, to the very meaning of this word. It would, it's, it, it would be treacherous to ignore it. It must be recognized. It must be acknowledged. Now, whatever the Holy Spirit is about to say in this portion of Scripture, it's so important that hearing it is not optional. It must be known and, and listen, and understood. And all you're getting, get understanding. Now, the Apostle Paul then told us what we must know. He let us know that the perilous time should come. Now, the word perilous, it really reminds me you know, this is, you know, this, you know, I, now, you know, I shared this information with you because the portion of the article that is shared with you from the rabbi, it, 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 it is the times that we're living in. It's this portion of scripture. The word perilous comes from the Greek word chelepos, a word that is used only two times in the 27 books of the New Testament. Now, this word chelepos was used to denote spoken words that were hurtful, harsh, cruel, ruthless, cutting, even wounding. And therefore, hard to bear. But it was also used to describe animals that were very ferocious, vicious, fierce, unruly, uncontrollable, unpredictable, and dangerous. Perilous. Chalepos. Now, in nearly every place where this word is used in secular literature of the ancient world, it depicts something said that is harmful or, or an environment besieged with high risk or danger. Now, the only other time, please understand, again, we're talking about the word perilous now, according to 2 Timothy chapter 3, starting in verse 1. But know this, that in the last days, perilous, chalepos in the Greek, the only other time the word chalepos is found in the New Testament is found in Matthew chapter 8, verse 28, where Matthew used it to describe two demon-possessed men. Matthew chapter 8, verse 28 vividly tells us, and when, now, please understand, I'm quoting this portion of scripture. And when he was come to the other side into the country of the, of the Gadarenes, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs exceedingly fierce so that no man might pass by that way. Now here's another phrase. This, this phrase exceedingly fierce in Matthew chapter 8 verse 28 is actually a translation of this very same Greek word chelepos found in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Because the word chalepos is used to describe these two demon-possessed men, it categorically conveys that they were vicious, 
ferocious, fierce, unruly, uncontrollable, unpredictable, and dangerous. In fact, if you read the entire story in Matthew's Gospel, it's clear that the people who lived in the region of the Gadarenes kept a safe distance between themselves and these two men because that they knew that being in close proximity to them would put their lives in jeopardy. So these two demon-possessed men were chalepos, vicious, ferocious, fierce, unruly, uncontrollable, unpredictable, dangerous. But they presented no threat to Jesus because he knew that he had authority over them. Come on. Therefore, instead of running like everyone else, Jesus stood up against those dark forces and set the captives free. He set those men free. Now this brings us back to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, where the Holy Spirit himself prophesies through Paul that perilous times shall come. If you take all the original Greek words into consideration, it literally delivers a potent message from the Spirit of God. Taking the definitions of all these words into consideration, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 could be taken to mean the following, and I quote, You emphatically must know what I'm about to tell you. In the last days, periods of time will come that are hurtful, harmful, dangerous, unpredictable, uncontrollable, and high risk. Folks, the Holy Spirit warned us 2,000 years ago that the world will become a very dangerous place at the end of the age. However, we had no idea how fast or how far it would spin out of control. But as we live in the world today, we are waking up to the harsh reality of a world that is exceedingly fierce. Because the word perilous, the Greek word chalepos, is used to, you know, to describe the demon-possessed men in Matthew chapter 8, verse 28, you could really believe that the Holy Spirit was warning us that demonic activity will absolutely be released in the last days that will bring about hurtful, harsh, cruel, ruthless, cutting, wounding situations that will be emotionally hard to bear. As a result of demonic activity, the world will become a place that is vicious, ferocious, fierce, unruly, uncontrollable, unpredictable, and dangerous. And we're living in a generation that faces threats that no other generation really has ever known. And as always, the Holy Spirit is absolutely correct in what he is telling us. So how, as believers, are we to respond to this? Instead of retreating in fear, God forbid, you move forward in Christ. You do what Jesus did when he encountered the demon-possessed men of the Gadarenes. And what terrified other people and made them retreat in fear is exactly what beckoned Jesus to action. In this hour, we are in action. We are in acts, if you will, like the book of Acts. We are allowing the Spirit of God to rule and reign in our midst, to lead us in every situation, in every case, in every circumstance, in every moment of every hour of every day that we continue to live and abide in the times that we're living in until the day of the Lord comes. Until the second return of Jesus comes. The situation, the circumstance, the atmosphere in today's world really beckons you to action, friends. This is a time for you to step forward and use the authority Jesus Christ has given you to bring deliverance and freedom, peace to each place that the devil has tried to bring chaos and harm and hurt, hazard and even risk. The situation that exists in the world today is really your opportunity to let the power and the glory of God shine through you. <clears throat> Make no mistake about it, the world is absolutely sinking deeper into fear and darkness. And this is our finest hour as children of God to be the light of the world in such dark times. Jesus himself tells us in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it. Let your light so shine before men so that they may look at your good works and glorify your God, glorify the Almighty God in heaven. Let God use you in these end times. Embrace the honor of the position in his plan that he has ordained for you in this time. Determine within yourself to trust God no matter what. <coughs> Excuse me. To trust him with your life, to trust him with your house, all that you care about in every moment of every day. The Bible tells us that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. He orders our steps. He is fulfilling prophecy every day. Prophecy is literally being 
fulfilled in our eyes every day, before our eyes every day. May we continue to be of a soft, teachable heart. A heart that continue to be molded by the Holy Spirit, by the Lord, and not become hardened, not grow cold like others. Jesus said that one of the signs of the times in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 24, he said that lawlessness will abound and the love of many will grow cold. Let it not be found so among us though. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. That can be broken. In the book of Jeremiah, the Bible says, is not my word like a fire, like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces, meaning that no matter how a heart may be hardened or deceived, God's word will break it. And in its place, you can receive a heart of flesh. The Bible tells us we must be born again. In such times that we're living in, there is no other way to live. I, I can't imagine living the time that we're living in without my Savior, without Jesus, without being born again, without the Spirit of God, without my name being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I can't imagine. I don't ever want to imagine. And yet people are, and I believe that God's grace is abundant on the world to many who are walking blind and as sheep on the broad path. I believe that the Spirit of God is working overtime to bring as many lost souls into the kingdom of heaven as possible. I pray that he use each and every one of us who are submitted and, 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 and subservient to God's word, his presence, and to his spirit. I pray that God continue to use us to make a difference in the lives of those that he places in, you know, around us. So this is a report, again, panic from pandemic based on idolatry connected to Satan. Another thing that this particular rabbi, you know, that this rabbi said in his report or in this article that I found very interesting was how he said that um, <clears throat> uh, apparently um, there is, you know, in neo-paganism, um, what does he say here? I want to repeat what he says. Give me one moment. He says here, it says here, Rabbi Green suggested that the spiritual dark power associated with the word was having a real world effect upon the current crisis. Could it be that this pandemic is a perverse idea concocted by self-proclaimed pens? Because they still exist. All these false, terrible religions in the world still exist. And people worship these, these, these idolatrous uh, things, these demons. He says, could it be that this pandemic is a perverse idea concocted by self-proclaimed pens in an attempt to create panic and pandemonium as a means of subjugating all humankind to become their compliant herd? Well, I'll tell you what, if it is, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to go back right to them. It's not going to work well in their favor. He, he goes on to say again, is pandemic a tool used by self-styled hunter deities to ensnare their prey? Panic, pandemonium, pan pandemic, all three reek of paganism. In the times that we're living in, where evil men and imposters are growing worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived, just as the scripture says, where we're living in perilous times, according to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, paganism increasing, a falling away in the times that we're living increasing, absolutely, this could be the case, and that would be a, that would be a subtle deception, a delusion that has fallen across the planet by a few hardcore paganists. But there's nothing too hard for God. And, and the Bible tells us that we can, as a matter of fact, it says it right here, it says, <clears throat> In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24, And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they, will, so that they may know the truth, and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. This is possible, no matter how strong the self-proclaimed pans sought to, uh, you know, cast this bewitching spirit over the masses. To, you know, I just did a broadcast on the Great Reset, the World Economic Forum having an agenda to 
do this great reset, the so-called economic reset, but it really is going to be a, a, a time of great turmoil for those who are not for their plan, for their agenda. They're talking about uh, you know, implantable microchips and brain scans in order for people to travel. It's, it's, it's a sick plan. And yet, God, let God be true and every man a liar. God is great. God is greater than any plan of man's and any plan of Satan's. And God, his power will overpower any dark power that would seek to be a real world effect upon any possible current crisis that would be sought to be manipulated or taken advantage of. We're living in the end times, but it doesn't mean that you have to be partakers of the deception or the deceit or the evilness of this time. It is my prayer that each and every one who is tuning in, that you be born again, that you give your life to Jesus. You have to cry out to God to save you. You have to cry out to God to forgive you of your sins. You have to cry out to God with the very with every fiber of your being and say, Lord, I realize that I, I'm, not, I'm not in right standing with you. I need to be saved. I'm living in fear. I'm living in doubt. I'm living without no compass. I'm living in, 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 in judgment. And I need... I need, I, need, I need to be saved. I need my sins to be forgiven. I need to be given a new life. Take my life, Jesus. You give him your life and he'll give you, he'll make you born again. That's not a religion. That's not a state of mind. That's a miracle. That was, that was made possible through the finished work of Jesus at the cross of Calvary over 2,000 years ago. The old you is gone and a new you is present. He makes you a new creation where all things pass away, all things become new, all things become of God now. Give your life to Jesus now. Please, in Jesus' name. I got it in the broadcast. I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to today's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. As always, it is a privilege and a pleasure to bring to you all the Word of God, breaking world news headlines, matching Bible prophecy. Visit my website at www.openyoureyespeople.com and um, you know while you're there, we have 10 years of uh, teachings and preachings and broadcasts and conferences. We have a school of ministry. I want you to take advantage of all that is available, the tools that you need to renew your mind, to, 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 to have you walk strong in the times that we're living in. God uses our ministry. It is literally led and inspired by the Spirit of God. And so, uh, you know, please visit my website, learn more about my ministry, and just make yourself at home. Uh, please learn, renew your mind, let God use our ministry to make that work for you, to make it possible for you. Um, I want to say thank you for all those who have become a blessing to the work of this ministry with your financial donations. Your donations help make the work of this end time ministry possible. So thank you. In, in the season of giving, come on, Thanksgiving is just right around the corner. I want to say that you remember us in your Thanksgiving by donating or becoming a monthly donor, you know. Uh, I, I, again, your donations really does make a difference. We've been going strong for 10 years. We, we take no government funding. Uh, we have no financial support from you know mother churches or father churches, any other house church. We literally have been, um, we, we have survived. We, we continue to thrive by the Spirit of God and by those who help support the work of this ministry with your prayers and your donations. And that's pretty humbling, okay? That's a faith-filled life but I, 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 don't, I don't want it any other way. So I'm grateful. And that's a faithful ministry. So we give God praise. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your love, your support. And thank you for taking advantage again of the teachings and the preachings that we do here at Open Your Eyes People. Until the next broadcast, may you all be richly blessed. In Jesus' name, bye-bye.